right? Then it's a complete total modal shift, which took us to the relative minor and cadence on that five. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Welcome, welcome back to another piano lesson with Warren. My name is Warren McPherson. If you're new to the channel, this is a channel where we discuss gospel music and how to play piano by ear. So that includes theory, uh, ear training, technique, repertoire, all of that good stuff. And today we're going to take a look at the Johann Kim's version of At The Cross. This is a brilliant pianist. I'm sure most of you guys have come across at some point. He posted a reharmonization version of At The Cross. And I'm just always amazed of just the ideas that he's able to come up with. It's, it's beautiful. And so today we're going to look at some of the chord analysis of the choices that he used in this and explain sort of the theoretical inner works as to why these work and how he's going about thinking about this stuff. All right. So we're not, I'm not going to do a verbatim sort of uh, a, a replica playback of everything he did, but I'm just going to pick some of the more interesting chords, explain to you what they are and how they kind of fit into the broader context of what he's doing. So stay tuned, all right? All right, welcome back. So if you haven't heard the Johann Kim's version of At the Cross, I'm gonna let's let's just listen to it in its entirety, and then I'll go back and pick different sections to talk about. All right, check it out. So good, right? I mean, the guy is just amazing. Everything, tasteful, right placing. It's just, it's all good. All right, so let's go back to the beginning and you know play through some, play through some sections and then pause and 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 then we'll try to discuss what's going on there. So let's take the first bit. He started with the verse, right? Let's let's take the first bit. Let's take that part. So, so. Ooh. That's a nice thing. So, if you're familiar with At the Cross, the basic version would just be, you know. Mm. 
So in the basic version of the hymn, though, that entire section is on the one chord. But as you can see, Johann made some changes. So he started, and then, so he's introducing this F-sharp augmented seventh right here, right? Or you can think about it as G-flat. You know what, let me, let me sh shift my uh, software to reflect the key that he's playing in, which is, is D major. Let me make that change. Okay, so now we got the change, so now you're seeing this, this F-sharp augmented chord right here. Right? So it's really just like a sharp 5. You can think of it also as a flat 13th. Then we got the 6 minor 11 to the B minor 11. Then this dark one. Ooh, this just totally lifts the thing. And right here we got this a sort of G, G sharp minor 11 chord. Doesn't even belong to the key. So right in the hymn though, everything hangs out on the one chord. But then Johann takes it. So this is a reharm version of that on the one, right? It's the three chord. It's an augmented seven, or you know, or you could think of it as a flat thirteenth. A reharm version of that one chord. Then he goes to the six, which is the relative minor for D major, right? So it's still within the same realm. But then this, he resolves that phrase on the G sharp minor 11th. It has no relevance or connection to the, uh, the D, but it sounds good. Because notice the melody still hangs out on that F sharp, which is the seventh of the G sharp minor 11. Right? You can think of this as like the tritone of the D. Right? It's a tritone from the D. So it's just really out there chord. And then he resolves it. Let's see how he resolves it. And so after he goes to that minor, the minor, the G sharp minor 11th, and then he takes it up, and then started from the, the like the right. So getting from this G sharp minor 11th. Then he takes it to, he, think of it as a chord resolving up a fourth. So he goes to the C sharp, which is like, you know, you can think about it as like the five in first inversion, but it's really a, it, it's a, it, it's a C sharp minor seven flat five, right? That's the chord. Then to the one. Then to the two. Then to the one in first inversion. Now in the hymnal, it would have goes to the five. But he didn't go to the five, right? So we take it from the two, one in first inversion. So he's now resolving it to this chord. So it's the two dominant in first inversion. Right, so we can think of it as a substitution for the five. Instead of going to the five, he goes to the two, dominant in first inversion. And then further resolve this chord. So, this chord right here, it's an F sharp flat nine chord. Beautiful sound, right? There's no seven really in the chord, or you can put the seven, right? Then, you know, you can put the seven in the chord. And this is kind of giving you a Phrygian um, dominant kind of sound. This is F sharp, 
13 or F sharp 7 flat 9 really comes from it's 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 the 5 chord of B minor it comes from the B minor scale B harmonic minor so so it means whew, we could run that B B uh, a harmonic minor scale over it So da 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 So it's like he cadenced on the five chord of the relative minor. Just absolutely beautiful. We'll take it from the top. Right? Then It's a complete total modal shift, which took us to the relative minor and cadence on that five. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Let's see how he continues this thing right here. Right, so he just complete the first verse. So after he does a da 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 Right? And then he takes it uh, So now he resolves it to the sixth. So the F sharp's going to the sixth, right? Because three three dominant generally likes to resolve to six, which is exactly what he did. After that, resolve it to the six, then minor five. So he's doing a two fives setup, right? Two, five, passing to go to four. And then you got and resolve it to this B altered chord right here. Because in the original hymn, it would have gone da 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 da. You could go to six. Da, 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 da. So that's how the hymn would have um, resolved it in the hymnal. But the Johann version, six, two. We're doing a two five passing, but it's a minor five, one dominant to the four. Then it goes. Resolve that. So, you know. Right? And then to the two. Two or two. Five. Five. And then to this cool sort of cadence. Right? Cadence. So for that he went to the after the five. Excuse me, he went to the the flat six, major seventh, flat two, and then resolving it to the one. So it, it, it's 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 this kind of. Um, this, this parallel motion where he moves the entire progression up a half step. So it's like doing a two, five, one in the key, a half step up from D, right? So if you think about it, he goes to this. It would have resolved an A flat. Or we can think of it as a. A chromatic median. Chromatic parallel, those sort of chromatic parallel relationship, right? He just took it up to the key of E flat and then resolve it back down. So again, this is a perfect example, excuse me, of modal mixture. It's a complete different shift of mode, right? Let's let's review that part again. Second verse. 
So those are some of the similar chords that we encountered in the, the first verse, right? So, uh, similar chord, right? Right? Then to the sixth. Uh, so he goes back to that minor 11 chord. Dominant. Six. But then, instead of going straight to the chord, he introduced that minor chromatic passing. Da, 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 da. See? So, minor 11, down a half step to that uh, minor 11 as well, A flat. And then you uh, So you see how he got out of that, right? After do that minor 11, he just does this kind of chromatic to the two. Let's take a listen. Yeah, so it's, it's really, it went to the C sharp minor, yeah? So it's like the seven, but he, instead of just making it a, a standard minor seven flat five, he made it into a minor. Uh -huh. One, two, and then we went to this two dominant one more time over here. Right? Go. Such a beautiful song, but then he did this nice run. So it's just kind of the same chord from the two to the three. Let's take a listen again. Yes. So it's a similar progression as the first verse with some added sort of runs and tweaks. Resolve it back to that um, that Phrygian sound, that Phrygian dominant sound on that five, the F sharp five of B minor. Let's keep it rolling. I like that one right there. I like that movement. So after he does the, the F sharp, then uh, and then the sort of F sharp diminish. Then five. Right? So, da, da, two, five passing. But instead of going, instead of playing the F sharp, he just reharmed it with sort of, um, instead of me playing the D, reharmed it with sort of an F sharp diminished. You can think of it as an extension of the D7. Like a D7 flat nine chord, right? So, da, da, right? Put up. Or you can just still play the root. Then the four. So just moving in triads right there. Yeah. Kinda. 
Let's take a listen. Cool, right? So from the D, you can throw in that B flat in there, then resolve to the B. Uh, so that's two minor nine. Yeah. So. So this is a bass descending. Yeah. So it's going through this chord. Yeah. Or something like that, right? So from the two. Right? So now it's going to like 2 minus 7 flat 5 and just going through the chord. So that F sharp 7 again. So it's like a 2 5 passing to go to 6. Now from the 6, he's doing some chromatic descent, some minor chromatic. Right there. So he's a. Uh, And then he do this 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 one altered quarter. <laughs> so it's this D altered chord. You know we got the sharp eleven. You know you can put in the flat thirteen, and then you can play a, a, a whole tone scale over that. Right? So, um, uh, trying to figure out what the best voice in these. So that's the D altered right there. He just did, you know. Uh, uh, uh. Right? So instead of going to the one, he just goes to the four in first inversion. Then the five in first inversion, and then that takes him back to the one. That's a nice little little run there. So, so what's going on there? Let's see if we could take a, a, a look at that. So and da da di da So that part after he cadence. Um, so chorus again. Right. So does that run? Right. 
So you're going to do three again, right? So it's the same thing to the six, minor, minor, then, or that altered version of the chord. Let's take a listen again. going to the two so it's taking it from the four to the two but he's taking it to the two such a nice movement and then it goes to the three Nice B alter there. Da, da. Right? And then you switch to that altered. Let's see how he ends it again. So he's doing a, 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 a three six um, chord progression resolving to the two dominant extension. So it says <clears throat> E thirteenth, right? So and here's just going through the B chord. comes back and tag that line again. Uh -huh. So he extend the tag. So it comes back to the two. Da, 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 seven. And then it comes to the two again. So just so doing like a cycle of fourth thing. Two, minor five, and then to that D altered again. Right? So or probably rootless voicing to give you that sound and then for the third time he's tagging that So right there after he did, does the... Uh, so five, six in first one. 
four in first inversion, five in first inversion, and then <laughs> so he's again taking the progression up a half step right to to the to the major key so we're in the key of d he goes up and do a sort of a cycle of fourth turnaround in the key of e flat actually it's not really working with the key it's just moving through the cycle of fourth right So now we're going to E flat, A flat. So E flat would be the flat two, A flat, flat five. This right here is the seven. You're all major seven chord. Then the flat four, and then come down to the D. Which are made with a major seven sharp eleven. Let's take a listen again. So <laughs> That's it. That's my rough analysis of um, <laughs> Johann Kim version. Some of my chords might not be the exact voicing um, that he used, but that's as close as I could get with the time frame. As you can see, I haven't learned it well enough to play it at the speed he, he was able to do it. But um, those are my chord analysis. Hopefully you got some interesting ideas as to how chords are used and just ways you can end your songs, turnarounds you can use, voicing you can use. One of the most important thing I want you guys to keep in note, keep in mind, you notice he never lost track of the melody. Throughout the entire uh, uh, um, process, his melody was clearly heard and a lot of his chordal choices were being influenced by the melody tone. And so that's just the keynote for you guys to take away. Whenever you're experimenting with chord reharmonization and so on, make sure that your melody fits in nicely with the chord. All right, so that's all I have for you today. If you're new to the channel and you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, please give us a subscribe and a like uh, so you can be notified when we post new content and let me know your thoughts in the chat. If you'd like to see more breakdown and chord analysis of Johan's um, arrangements, you know, let me know in the chat and I'll see what I can do. Obviously, these are not easy. They take time to figure out what's going on. You know, again, kudos to Johan. He's doing an amazing job with just the reharmonization he's putting out. Some of these things, I'm not going to lie, even for me, I'm like, oh, I didn't even know that stuff would work. So he's definitely ahead of the curve, you know, when it comes to this stuff. Um, and obviously, if you guys haven't checked out Johan's channel yet, Johan Kim, he's crushing it. You know, he has tons of reharm original stuff that he's doing. I also post a link to his channel in the description of the video so you guys can head over there, check it out, you know, show him some love, give him a subscribe. I would love to have him on the channel. You know, sometimes we talk to Instagram, but he doesn't speak English, so it, it wouldn't be that easy for us to do a live video interaction. But anyway, um, I admire what he's doing from a distance, you know. His type of harmonization is something that resonates with me. This is the type of reharmonization that I appreciate, you know, because there's always more that you can add to these things, but more is not always the best idea. And I think Johan has this gift of just striking the balance of really pushing the influence of harmonization in some of his stuff without ruining the hymn. In fact, he makes these things so beautiful. And I'm glad that he's sharing this stuff with us because I'm learning from him as well. And lastly, if you guys want to learn more about how you can develop your ear and your gospel piano playing, 
P&O and Smith Warren is a wonderful place for you to hang out and check out. We run a membership program over there for people just like yourself want to learn music and learn it well. We have a structured, guided program over there. So head over to P&O and Smith Warren and check that out. All right. And so till then, keep listening, keep singing, keep practicing, because this is how you'll continue to improve as a musician. Bye for now and talk soon.